welcome to Powerbomb Nation presents the Culture Cast. With you as always, Mr. Jason Shepard over to my left, right, depending on which way you're looking at the screen. I'm Dwight Couch. We got a fantastic show for you tonight. We are going to be talking about the pop culture event of the 80s and 90s, the Satanic Panic, where the devil's in the details. But we got a lot of stuff to get to first. Jason, it's been a couple weeks, man. How's it going? It's been a couple weeks. Yeah, doing good, man. Doing really good. Doing good. Um, yeah, I was skipped last week. Uh, some things came up, and but we're back. And but you've kept busy. You've. Um, are you there? We've we've lost you. Ah, yeah, no, that's, you're, yeah, you're living in the country. I I forget that you're. Oh yeah, no, yeah. My my shit's gonna go in and out. So yeah. All right, so yeah, we're all doing been, good. Yeah, we're all doing Did good. Did you see the crane here? over my shoulder oh i didn't see it yeah so i picked that up i pre-ordered that little bad boy from uh best action figures and it is a 31 points of articulation perfect scale of the retro crane from the cartoon so it's certainly not the same size as the one that we didn't have when we were kids right or i didn't have it but Correct. I didn't have it either. I no, had a little one my on parents the were not not buying that. They were like, did a uh, bo- unboxing on that where I also unboxed the blood out of my finger, uh, which was fantastic. Right after I was like, you know, be careful with knife kids. There we go, and there came the blood. Oh yeah. Did you leave it in? Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh, I'll I, have to watch we, the we video. roll with all. I don't edit. I don't edit. You know, it saves yeah. me a lot of time not editing, and people probably love the uh, the outtake, especially that one because you can tell I said that and then. Oh, you just see my whole body tense up, and I was like, "Oh dear." Yeah. So, uh, what are you drinking on? Okay. I, you know what? I'm, 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 I'm balling tonight. I, oh. I yesterday picked up, um, and not necessarily tonight because the weather sucks. But yesterday it was very summer-like, right? So right. I was in the mood for something summery. So Michelob Ultra has these really good, you know different couple flavors and the, the the one i got was um lime and prickly pear cactus oh and, wow i don't know you know it's pretty good very light very crisp tastes like summer man but um yeah and then the weather does what it's doing now oh, yeah so. i think it might snow crazy i don't think it's it, really gonna snow better not there it better, better not be snow. any more snow in our forecast like <laughs> no it will probably snow a foot and a half tomorrow. Well, I hope that you're very wrong about that. And if you're not, I'm coming after you. What is that? Like that elixir from the 19 ginger beer. Mm. It is non-alcoholic. It is oh. an Australian family owned crafted ginger beer called Bundaberg. Okay. And it's really, really number one. It's got a really cool bottle. I it is a cool a bottle. Like, like a little barrel, but, uh, yeah, you it's could, really good. I've been, you could poison I've been somebody with that bottle. What's that? So you could poison somebody with that bottle. It does look like something. You know, you get the little skull you know? and crossbones and put on exactly. the other side there. Like three X's on it. Right. I'm going to yeah. just... Uh, sorry, I'm going to share this over so people know we are we are live now on, on our social medias and Facebooks. Um, so I know you have it. And I did, though. I went and watched the new Mario movie. That's the biggest excitement I've got this week. And front to back, it was fantastic. It's a great family film. You will laugh. I will cry like I do at everything. Can you um, you tell me that? Can you hint at what made you cry? Or was it just, was it it just was the feeling of, of emotions? Yeah. Number one, because... It was very well done. So at the end, got a couple little like uh, happy tears. Nothing okay. real big. But okay. at the beginning, everyone knows Mario's in Brooklyn. Right. So in the beginning, they're out to to uh, do their plumbing business and help Brooklyn, right? And that's a whole thing is they want to save Brooklyn and make themselves known. And uh, my daughter may have been named after said city and the reason being so told, yeah, is because of the mario brothers and and ninja turtles and all the little connections you got to that city and uh, 
Needless to say, within the first five minutes of the movie, the emphasis on that had uh, brought me to a few little tears, enough that my wife looked over and she said, you're crying, aren't you? And I was like, well, yeah, of course I am. I'm, I'm a big old sap. So uh, I cried everything. Uh, front to back, man, This don't listen to the critics. The critics don't know what the hell they're talking about. If you're going into this and you're wanting war and peace, you're going to the wrong movie because it's it's freaking Super Mario Brothers. And we all know the premise of Super Mario Brothers, and it sticks very true to this. But if you want nostalgia done right, from the before the movie starts on the opening scene till after the credits when you got the post credit scene. So make sure you stay for that front to back. It hits every single nostalgia. There is a reference to every single thing. Mario is referenced in this movie. And it is amazing that someone was able to take all this stuff. Number one and get all the pieces that they got in is absolutely amazing. And for those worried about the cast, fantastic. Chris Pratt does an amazing Mario. Charlie Day as Luigi is awesome. The lady playing Princess Peach is spot on. But Jack Black steals the show as Bowser. And uh, Fred Armisen really kills it as Cranky Kong. Cranky Kong oh, is, was is he a cranky huge... Kong? part of this movie and I was really <clears throat> impressed because I was not sure how I would like Cranky Kong having such a good part. He Go was really it. good um as Fester in, in the Wednesday series. Did you did you watch did I have you watch not that? finished the Wednesday oh, series. Have you gotten to the point where he's in it yet? No. Oh it's it's really good. Yeah I, I enjoyed I enjoyed Wednesday quite a bit. Yeah I think I've just seen the first two episodes and then it's one of those we kind of gotta wait for bedtime before we can we can get going yeah um so yeah go see super mario's this is the sun bright of the day because uh we got a little something different to talk about tonight oh my gosh do we ever get the crucifixes out because we're going to take you into to scary territory i should have went and seen the pope's exorcist what's that what, what is that Oh, I don't know, but uh, I heard some uh, pastors on a radio show, and they said that's that's as close to a real exorcist. Like this movie is. Oh, it's a, it's a movie. Spot okay, on. I haven't heard of this. I don't think. Mm. Yeah, it looks scary as hell. It's like, uh, yeah, it's the Pope's exorcist. I mean, it's exactly what it sounds like. It is. Is it is the Pope possessed, or is he doing the exorcising? I don't, think, I don't know. But they call it Pope's exorcist. Pope gets Pope gets possessed. That sounds good. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, that listen, could be, we're, uh, we're bad times. Yeah, we're we're going to because who saves him? God, I mean, God saves everybody. Well, you're right. I guess you're right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Oh, we got the uh, we got the metal signs going on already. What up? What up? Ready yes. To hear. Look, <laughs> we're we're going to talk about the fear that was instilled in us as children, and if you're old enough your children uh but um what a time what a time the 80s was for <laughs> satanism and it started i don't know if your notes are going to are going to compare to mine but it started right there in 1980 with a little a little something and we're going to talk about it we're going to talk about it well i got a little a little backstory on here so let me get a couple paragraphs and uh then i'll no. turn it over to you totally cool so for those who don't know, for those who are not in the know, knowing's half the battle. So let's talk a little bit about what the satanic panic was. It was a phenomenon that occurred in the United States during the 80s and the early 90s, where there was a widespread fear and belief. There was a vast organized satanic cult networking and operating within the country. The belief was largely based on a series of highly publicized cases alleged satanic rituals, and associated claims of child abuse, murder, and other crimes. The satanic panic was fueled by media coverage of high-profile cases like McMartin Preschool Trial and the West Memphis Three case, which featured allegations of satanic rituals and child abuse. The media coverage, often sensationalized, as most media coverage is, Oh, see, there I go and ad lib and I lose my place. And the allegations leading to a moral panic that spread throughout society. 
As a result of the satanic panic, many innocent people were falsely accused of being part of satanic cults and engaging in SRAs, satanic rituals. This included child care workers, teachers, and parents, and the panic even led to the proliferation of books, videos, and other media that claim to expose the suspected satanic controversy. Over time, though, it has become clear that many of the allegations of SRA were baseless and the result of overzealous investigators and therapists who relied on unproven techniques to extract confessions out of victims. As a result, the satanic panic gradually faded away in the late 90s, but its impact on American culture and society remain significant. Cats and dogs living together. Mass, mass hysteria. hysteria. Mm. That's how it started. That's the big disclaimer so people don't freak out when they read the title of the episode or get in kind of late into this and they might hear some really weird shit what, coming what up. What the hell are these guys talking about? I want you, you're you're done with the internet for the night. You got to log off. No more YouTube. And matter of fact, unsubscribe to them. You're not watching them again. You're not watching them. I it's, have read um, Anton LaVey's book when they came out. Yeah. That's from good old Scott MacArthur. Thank you, Scott, for tuning in tonight. Yeah, well, Anton, he... Uh, he was the big ringleader of it, wasn't he? He was um so what do you want to do you want to do you want me to kick kind of kick off with some what I get is, the disclaimer, get into it, and I will uh we will see where see where this this road down a, a wicked Ouija board leads. Yes. So um if you look into kind of what started the whole satanic panic thing of the nineteen eighties, it actually started in nineteen eighty. Apparently, with a book. My McDonald's order yesterday was 666. And they're like, you know what? Add a, can you add one of uh, apple pies on there? Yeah, can I just pay Let's you throw a pie or a parfait or a something on there? Yeah. Um, so it started in 1980 with a book. And I don't know if you, in, in your research you came across anything about this. This is apparently what kicked it off. A book called Michelle Remembers. Um, this book was written by Dr. Uh, Lawrence Pazder and his patient, Michelle Smith. Um, and basically what happened was uh, this Michelle Smith was uh, a patient of, of Dr. Pazder's and, and um, she had gone through a lot of trauma and a couple of miscarriages and she uh, was seeing a therapist. And, and, and basically there was a, an, a, an instance where he was having a session with her. And she just sort of snapped and kind of broke down crying for like 20 minutes straight. So he begins um, trying to get to the bottom of what's going on here. And he starts, it was never, it was never stated that he did this for a fact, but uh, he, it, it was in the book. It, there's, there's many um, subtle, apparently um, hints that he was using hypnotherapy on her. So, he would he would he would put her into these apparently uh, hypnotherapy sessions and uh, he compiled over 600 hours of audio tapes um, uh, over 600 yeah hours of audio tapes of therapy sessions from to, to, to base this book on and um, when she would go into these therapy these hypnotherapy sessions with him she would essentially revert back to apparently five-year-old child which is to when all of these things happen to her now let me just put it out there like apparently a lot of this stuff is horse shit like everything that she said was just absolute horse shit but because later on he eventually tried to get the movie deal you know what i mean tried to get the you know the book tour you know right but um essentially she claims that when she was five she uh for over a year had uh, satanic ritual abuse happen to her. Um, and some of her experiences included, um, these are some of the, just some of the claims that were in the book. I watched a video uh, about someone reviewing the book and this was just some of the horse shit. I mean, I mean, it's, 
I'm not saying that there aren't Satanists out there. There obviously are. But I don't think Satanists are necessarily bad people. Now, I know that that's probably going to kick Now, listen. Now, listen. Hold on. That's, that's probably going to kick a lot of shit up. But I'm not saying that from what I understand, <laughs> their beliefs are not necessarily what everybody may not be. That doesn't make me a saint. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just simply stating what I believe to be facts. Now, this stuff that I'm about to read to you is ludicrous and only out of a 1970s horror movie about Satan. So here we go. These are some of the things that she claimed happens to her. That Satanist in this cult that she was in when she was five had an endless supply of white kittens and babies that they would eat and sacrifice. She would be locked into a hollow Satan statue and forced to eat dead babies because she refused to eat her normal food, which they riddled with bugs. And so they're like, hey, you know what? You don't want to eat the you don't want to eat the bug food? You're going in the Satan statue and you get to eat the dead babies. It's like what, what's it gonna be? Right? And apparently she didn't eat for a year. A whole year. Now wouldn't you die after eating not eating for a whole year, right? So whatever. Um, she was apparently thrown into a grave as a baby after her mother gave birth to her, and a Satanist woman pulled her out of the grave and reenacted her birth. Um, also, uh, apparently she was in church one time, and an evil church pew appears, and the priest had to burn it. Oh. Um, an evil doctor cuts up a bunch of dead bodies and surgically sewed horns and a tail on Michelle herself. Hmm. Uh, a whole room full of Satanists spin their heads around in unison right in front of her. Uh, Syn synchronized spinning. You know, that's synchronized crazy. spinning, man. And a 12-year-old girl is put on a cross in front of her. And Satan himself, the big guy, Beezlebub, cuts her heart out and cleaves her body in half right there in front of her. Just, you know. So anyway, he tries to get, he, hey, this is great stuff. I, we need to get the movie deal and you get the, you know. And, and she didn't, the, the person I watched in the video that was reviewing it didn't say who, but someone stopped them from getting the rights to get a movie done about it because they threatened to sue. I don't know who, like, I, I don't understand who, or I don't know, but uh, no movie was made, but uh, Michelle Remembers apparently set off uh, uh, tremors in the early 80s and sort of set the tone for satanic panic that would come and it did come in many forms um you do you well i, I could keep going on but you i mean that's it as far as michelle remembers but do you have anything to, to throw in or well you do you talk about this this continuing on and of course this was it was in 1980 in 1983 you had Judy Johnson accuses the McMartin preschool in California of satanic ritual abuse. And this led to a highly publicized trial that actually lasts for seven years seven involving years. allegations of all the, all the above that we have discussed so far. Um, 84, a book by sociologist Jeffrey Victor, satanic panic, the creation of a contemporary legend is published. And the book argues that a satanic cult phenomenon is and moral panic are not based on real evidence. So this was someone coming out against the uh, the earlier claims there. But man, what a perfect decade for that kind of movie to be made. I mean, you know, you're on the heels of oh, yeah. all kinds of really weird movies anyways and slasher flicks. I mean, the guy was on the right track. Mm -hmm. I mean, for what it's worth, it probably would have been a cult classic oh, it would have been a hit <laughs> putting the cult in cult classic <laughs> he um Since 1980 yeah uh, you know you mentioned the mcmartin preschool case i had notes on it you know that was crazy because the thing about the mcmartin preschool case was it started with an isolated incident where a woman apparently said hey you know my my son is experiencing uh satanic ritual and sexual abuse at his preschool, at the McMartin Preschool, which is in uh, Manhattan Beach, California. And uh, they gathered up, I mean, they did an investigation. They gathered up, 
I think it was seven or nine teachers and the principal that all or whoever that all worked there and um, did an investigation on them. And like you said, it lasted for, for years, but they would put these kids into therapy sessions and, and they would question them and they would say, hey, you know, so tell me about this. Tell me about that. Do you remember when this happened? Like, for example, there was something like, do you remember when they got you all naked and you all played naked games or um, when, you know, people were taking pictures and the kids were like, no, that actually never happened. And it was, uh, you know, led to believe that these therapists were not satisfied with those answers. So they would keep coaxing the children into forcing them into kind of giving them the answers on videotape that they wanted, that they essentially wanted to maybe help drum up a little more satanic panic. And you know what I mean? Kind of kick the dirt up a little bit on that. But um, the, the kids were never... Um, I mean, they, they, they and, and it's what they kind of called false memories. They were kind of forced into creating these false memories. Like oh, maybe that did happen. Maybe they're right. And I think, yeah, maybe, maybe you're right. That did happen, but they did a whole investigation into it. They went into the school, they looked, you know, um, there was no physical evidence that any of this stuff happened. I mean, there was talks of sacrifices, animal sacrifices in the, in the fucking school, you know, and like, and they were like, we went in and, there was nothing to be found. Like if, if all of these crazy things were happening, man, like we would have found something. We, there is no hard proof at all that any of these things happened. So yeah, the trial lasted what it was. Um, it was a seven year. Yeah. It started in 84 and in April of 87, the case went to trial. Everybody else, all everybody, all the other teachers had been dismissed, but except for the remaining two, the woman, the McMartin woman and her son who worked there. And they maintained their claims of innocence to the whole thing. The trial, the trial for them lasted three years. And in 1990, they were found not guilty. So uh, it was interesting. I watched a video on it and it was like, you know, like the, inve the, the investigators and attorneys and everybody themselves, they were like, ah, we we couldn't, I mean, we couldn't rightfully prosecute these people because we just don't believe this happened. Like we just don't believe this happened. And, uh, so yeah. Well, and rightfully so, because if you look down through the little timeline of events, 1987, um, uh, the Satan seller by Mike Warnke, a book that claims memoirs of Warnke's experience as a high priest, within said uh, religion, the book is later exposed as a fraud. 1988, sure. and we'll get a little more into, into this particular segment of it. 1988, Geraldo Rivera, devil worshiping, expo exposing Satan's underground, which contributes to the public perception. Now that is where the real fire got thrown onto this because well, everybody watched Geraldo. I, I've got a little something that I've got, I've definitely got a note on that special that Geraldo special to, but go ahead. Yeah. You know. All right. So, um, 1992, the publication of Michelle remembers is debunked by investigative journalists and, and Ooh. academics. You can see as the, as we get more progressed as a society and more networking inter interaction out of the, out of the eighties into the nineties, people started realizing, Oh yeah, there's a, this is a lot of this is horse shit. Horse shit. Um, <laughs> the late 90s, the satanic panic begins to fade as it becomes clear that many of the claims were all unfounded and very, very questionable evidence. It's just one of those things that I think, given the lack of, of knowledge and, and networking, network ability at the time that you just hear these things, you get freaked out. There's the Cold War, so you know there's all kinds of end of the world, end of the world phenomena. Or we were big on fear, on. yeah. We were living on fear back then, man. That was. And Geraldo Rivera had a big <laughs> chunk to do with this back in the '80s. Geraldo was, I mean, he was the hottest thing. You know, he was Jerry Springer before Jerry was Jerry. When Jerry was leading Cincinnati, Geraldo was inciting all kinds of stuff on daytime TV. He got his nose broken during the skinhead fight. You remember that? Yes, I did. Yeah. Somebody, I think, hit him with a chair or something. And Yeah. Yeah. Her Geraldo, you know, I used to love Geraldo and Phil Donahue. 
both were fantastic, you know. You know, well, I went through a phase a couple of years ago where I was like, I kind of want to watch Geraldo episodes. Like, so I, I, I found a bunch on YouTube and I'm like thoroughly enjoying them. I'm like, these are great, man. These are great. But I came across the Satanic Panic episode and um, I was like, well, shit, I got to watch this. Like, it's Geraldo and Satanic Panic. Like, somebody's going to get in a fight. It's going to be like, there's going to be some heat somewhere, right? So I watch it and it's just, it's a hoot. I mean, it's a total riot. Um, first of all, Ozzy Osbourne is, is on, is on the special. So, so like after you're done here, if you're interested in watching this, which you should be, uh, just look up on YouTube, Geraldo, Satanic Panic. It'll come right up. It should, unless it's been taken down, but I can imagine that it has. But... Oh no, it's still on there. You can. See okay. It. Yeah. Um, it is so much fun. It's like just, <clears throat> yeah, Ozzy's on there and he's like, so we've got Ozzy Osbourne. He's like, you know, shock rocker. He's hot right now. Ozzy, what, what are your thoughts on Satanic Panic? And Ozzy's like, hey, I, I just make music. I don't condone any of this shit. Like, whatever they're talking about, I don't, you know, he's like, I'm not, I'm not promoting this shit. Like what? It, but no, I'm, I'm just making music, man. Like, I hate that we're looked at that way. And, oh, they had a guy on there who's been in, he went to prison. I guess he was kind of like a youth. I, I don't know, like a teen or early twenties or something. And he's, he's, he's in prison for apparently like, I don't know, uh, murdering someone in a satanic manner. And, and they had him on there interviewing him from prison and, um, Anton LaVey was mentioned and his daughter, of course, Anton's dead, but his daughter, um, Anton LaVey was the founder of the Satanic Church. And I can't remember when that was actually, but uh, his daughter was on the uh, episode and she was talking. So it's just very interesting. And it's, it's fun to look back on and see where we were as a society and where we were, where our heads were culture wise during all of that and during that time and a lot of fun man definitely like top tier Geraldo right there Geraldo even participated in the reenactments when they do the reenactment scenes yeah yeah that. yeah did you we watch were it very active in that and uh you know it was you know the coverage was was very controversial of course at the time and uh of course everyone was accusing of sensationalizing the the which he was obviously he was that's what sure. he does yeah. you know you don't you're not a, a radio shock jock or a tv daytime drama king without trying to to be over the top with that um uh, and you know Geraldo was taken and he's still taken as a very serious journalist he's a very right serious individual so there was a lot of older people that tend to believe what they had heard from Geraldo and uh, it wasn't true and Chris brings up a really good point here that his grandmother tried to convince him that his he-man toys were satanic but his mom defended it and said it was evil versus good and good always won which is how this could be looked at but he's not the only one out there who ran into these kind of issues with an older generation, especially growing up where we grew up here in the, in kind of the Bible belt of the U S in a very Southern Baptist prominent area of Kentucky. What's up, Jeremy? Glad you could join us for the uh, culture cast tonight. Glad to see you out and about and, and hanging out, sir. Hello, Jeremy. Thank you. So, right, I'm over uh, here typing more notes, like things to talk about that just pop in my head when I'm. Things like Dungeons and Dragons, and it still gets a bad rap today. You know, mm -hmm. Dungeons and Dragons, the role playing game, was accused of having satanic themes and causing teenagers to become involved in occult practices. You know, occult practices as staying out of trouble hanging out with your friends, right? not doing remotely anything bad because you're generally not drinking, you're not out smoking. Yeah. You're Staying not in the house and playing a game. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're not out repopulating the world in most yeah. of the cases. But yeah. you're, you're down in a basement and you're playing Dungeons and Dragons and you're 
you're you're flexing your mind and and evolving your brain. The one that kills me. Did you know that Care Bears were considered satanic? Stop. Oh yeah, I kid you not. The fluffy colors of the rainbow that gave you all the power were viewed by some conservative Christians for promoting new age spirituality, mm. which was believed to be linked to Satanism. Mm. You know, if you had a, a probably if you drove around with a crystal in your car, people. Oh, yeah. You know, oh, remember yeah. the church lady Saturday Night Live? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It was my grandmother, but you know, hey. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, man. Like uh, that's crazy. I didn't know the Care Bears thing. Um, of course, I, I feel like the occult in general was like big in the eighties, huge, and the whole taboo that like came with it. And uh, what, what's what? I think come down to know if it is. We just get bored. Could be. Could be boredom. Could be. An idle mind's the devil's playground. Bum, bum, yeah. Bum. Oh. Um, speaking of taboo, quick insert. You know, there's a there's an NES game. There's a Nintendo game called Taboo: The Sixth Sense. And what it is is it's a tarot card game, and you uh, you don't really play it so much as you pop it in. It takes like five minutes to play it. You put your name in, and then you ask it a question. So you type the question out on with, you know, with your controller. Like you could say, so, "What will I be rich? Will I will I be married? Whatever you know." And then it deals you out these like. Well, first it like gives you these seizure inducing like graphics on the screen. <laughs> it's like whoa shit! Like after that, the cards are laid out and they you know, they get shuffled on the screen and. All these creepy tarot card images are shown, and it's kind of it was kind of um it it was it was kind of risque for Nintendo to even release anything like this, but it was like uh there'll be a guy hanging from a noose, or there'll be naked women with their asses showing on on Nintendo and stuff like that, and uh it was none the of only... those made it into the Mario movie. This game was not referenced whatsoever. Okay. But I, you know what? I love Taboo the Sixth Sense. And I it's a rare occasion that I'll pop it in just for the, the novelty factor of it. It's a lot of fun. But um, it was the only Nintendo game I ever knew that had a warning label on the cover that said, um, for mature audiences only. Or, yeah, I mean, it's you should look into it. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, it's really funny. Um, just that kind of stuff was going on in the 80s. And, of course, Ouija boards have always been a thing, but... Let me ask you a question. Now that's something I don't mess with. I don't want no. No, I, of. no. It won't be in my house. No. Okay, so you, so you're even you're of that persuasion that that thing is pure evil. There is no reason the Has brothers should have done that. I look. Here's the thing. I um. It's a very vast, very crazy universe, and I don't necessarily know anything about it, right? So, who knows what's out there? Who knows? Who knows anything, right? But I'm certainly not going to sit down and take my chances with some stupid <laughs> shit. Like, I'm just not going to do it. Like, I already have enough bad luck. Like, I'm not going to, like, enhance it or do anything to... Uh, propel that in any manner so fuck a ouija board I'm not doing it um it's one of those novelty things that like if, if you want to play with it that's cool but i'm just i don't think it's for me man i'll um probably pass on it yeah i'm out i've never heard anybody that's had one have anything good to say about anything you know really they, they always come with a story about it being in the closet being under the bed and something weird happening wherever that thing's stored. It's on the coffee table all of a sudden, and nobody got it out. <laughs> like what? Oh man, you know there was some really good, uh, really good <sighs> Simpson episode for Halloween that was based around one of those things, and it really? sucked their house into the ground. See, I don't want, I don't want my house sucked into the ground. 
Yeah, no, I, I like it above ground. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, I'm out on Ouija boards. I do have a Magic 8-Ball. Those are fine. Yeah, I don't think there's... I make a fun. lot of life decisions based off the Magic 8-Ball. Yeah, I think that's a that's a good way to go. I the think guys at work will... will I'll use that to to uh, help my sales guys at work. Magic yeah. Eight Ball that that gives you the answer to everything. Well, can we be like Dwight? It's like so. What do you? He'd be like, "Fuck." <laughs> it says all signs point to yes, or ask again later. Like, get out of my <laughs> office, come back later. I'll try again. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's. Uh, I don't, Tater Hole. I don't agree with you, man. I I will not. I will not have a Ouija board anywhere near the house. I do not believe it's fake, and and I don't want no part of that whatsoever. Um, like I I literally have not ever. I have never seen one. I've never been around one. Never person. been in the same room. Nor will I be. I have seen them on the shelves at like fucking Target, and I'm like, God damn, they still make Ouija boards. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe. But I've never seen one open in front of me, ready to play. Like I've never. Oh, that's uh, yeah. He he. I work with Matt. Matt. Okay. So, uh, yeah, his his dad would thoroughly love this episode. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, yeah. No, I've never I've never like been in the presence of one, and I I don't I don't plan to be so. So let's um, talk about some of the stuff that I know me and you were in the presence of. <clears throat> okay. He man, as Chris mentioned earlier, um, toy line of promoting occult and new age themes, Thundercats. The animated TV series and store line was also accused of promoting occult themes and Satanism. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. What? Christians believe that the Ninja Turtles were promoting Eastern mythicism. And were therefore linked to Satanism. That's just racist, is what that is. People hating on turtles. They're freaking more. That's more. Be mad at the nuclear plant that let all the waste out into the thing to mutate the turtles and give them, you know, multiple eyes. And I mean, science. Science is what made the ninja turtles, science. not the devil. Yeah, that's. Yeah, I don't know about all that. Um, <laughs> no, I'm not no, drinking I milk don't. from my I, cereal bowl. No, I I do not drink the milk. That will not change, sir. Matt, Matt answers. He has never. He never saw, and I know this to be true. That there's a lot of things that he didn't get to see until he was an adult. Uh, but never got to see a a episode of TMNT until he was an adult. Well, let me tell you, I people's no, I mean, life is, were impacted by this. This is total side note, but I tried. I'm going through a big Ninja Turtle phase right now. Like I'm kind of like, oh, just so into them, and I'm I'm looking up things about them I didn't know and about the whole world about them, not just them. I mean, anyway, but uh, I, I was like, yeah, I, I'll go back and try to watch the cartoon. And this is like two or three times that I've tried to do this. Um, Yes, Scott, that shit gets <laughs> dumped out, man. Let's assume, Scott, let's assume that I would, I've, I'm would. i going to have seconds on a bowl of cereal. And I explained this in a, an earlier episode. Uh, I will dump it and wash the bowl and pour new milk in on top of the new cereal. Like, I am not, there's just something kind of grody about it. But I've gotten to the point now where I won't even drink or buy milk itself. I'll, I'll do like almond milk and I'm not the kind of guy that goes for any of that, you know, that kind of shit, but like almond milk, it's pretty, pretty top tier. I like it. I'll reuse so, the milk. I won't drink it. I will I'm pour not, more cereal in and add, add milk to it because I think one bowl of milk goes for two bowls of cereal. Like the ratio for milk can be used for multiple cereals, but I will yeah. not drink it. I will not. I will dump it out. Well, no, I'm just not. I I'm going like to get it. new milk. No, I'm going. Gonna happen. No, I'm, like I'm talking. I'm putting rock. like fucking Dawn in the in the bowl and scrubbing it out and re and, and going for round two. Like I'm going to do a whole. I'm going to do a whole uh, a whole wash down on the bowl. 
Harry Potter. Yeah, you know, Harry Potter was probably criticized pretty big. It's too, right here, know? the book series and merchandise accused for promoting witchcraft and Satanism. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. Um, so Ninja, yeah. Ninja Turtles. Oh, Ninja Turtles. What was I saying about it? What were we saying about you were, it? You were on you oh! a Ninja Turtle kick and you've been Listen. going down the Ninja Turtle rabbit hole. As an adult, it's a very, I know this is stupid because cartoons are made for kids, but like some cartoons you can go back and really appreciate it as an adult. Like Ghost, the real Ghostbusters is one of them. Ninja Turtles is a hard watch, man. So Matt, I'm sorry that you had to witness that as an adult. It would have hit you different if you grew up with it. But man, let me tell you, it is a hard sell as a 40 something year old man or however old you might be. But uh, I'm. I, what did you think about it? Type, did, let us know. Chat, but click any clack on that keyboard. Let me know because I'm I'm sure you probably thought it was was terrible, right? Right, Matt. I I tell you what, actually, I've, I've not fucker. rewatched our Ninja Turtles, but I've watched other Ninja Turtles that were okay. Some of the Nickelodeon stuff has a pretty good stories behind it. I think the best one has been that 2003 series where it pulled Source right out of the comics. Source materials came right out of the old Mirage comics. And it was like, they kept that running. They, they pulled a lot of, of stuff out of that. And they, do you got Pluto TV? I do. And there is a channel on there, right? Yes. I was going to say it's a Ninja Turtles all the time. And I will throw that on occasionally and just have it playing. Yeah. And there's some pretty good pretty good ninja turtle stuff on that now i don't like the animation for everything because people have really screwed the ninja turtles over time on the way they look uh michael bay <clears throat> yeah um so that's anyway uh, we are way off not really we, off topic because yeah, I, Matt, I, apparently the ninja wait, turtles we were satanic an but answer. i huh he saw a few episodes, but never got into that or Power Rangers. Power Rangers were probably considered space satanics. Satanics. Yeah, they probably were. Zordon, the big talking head, you know. Oh, he's Satan. Um, yeah. Here's one that I was directly affected by, Magic the Gathering. I played Magic the Gathering See, I when I was a teenager, and I enjoyed playing. And, uh, yeah, it was widely considered, and, and part of the time I was going to church there, and, uh, you know, I was told that you shouldn't play any of that. It was all Satan and violence. That's correct. That's all it is. Man. Ninja Turtle staff. It was really a inverted cross. Ooh. That's what Raphael's size were. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Magic the Gathering was one that people, I mean, there were protests. I remember, you know, seeing that stuff on the news where Christians were up in arms because, because of a card game that had just as much stuff about god the wrath of god and angels and um swords to plowshares and all this light stuff and it had just the equal amount of the dark side with it as well it also had a side of nature it had a side of the ocean you know a fire so it was a very well balanced there was no representation without having the other side represented it was very equal equally done on all sides i felt yeah yeah, I never, I never once played it. I was never into to those um, kinds of card games and things. But, uh, yeah, I remember Magic catching hell for it. Um, Magic never caught me, but was un, was unwelcome in one kid's house over my... Oh, Pokemon. Pokemon getting the satanic treatment. Right. And, of course... I would have thought that would have got PETA treatment. <coughs> Right. Yeah. Um, did you have any more as far as uh, cartoons or games or things like that? No, nah, My Little Ponies. What? My Little Ponies made the list. That's crazy. Um, yeah, Ouija board. I thought the Care Bear was the most. Okay, so My Little Pony was New Age Spirituality. So it was a lot of like hippie stuff. You know, they're coming off the verge of the hippies of the 70s, and that's what they go to. Oh, yeah, well, your peace, love, and all that is devils. Free love. Yeah, well, that's crazy. I never knew anything about Care Bears and My Little Pony being a part of that. That's absolutely ridiculous. 
much like a lot of things, but it wasn't only the stuff we seen on TV. It was also the stuff you were putting in your ears. That's right. I mentioned earlier, Ozzy yes. Osbourne. Ozzy. Oh, yeah. How many Why records? He bit a head off the bat. <laughs> I peed on the Alamo. Yeah. Uh, how many records were you told, you know, hey, if you play it backwards, hey, if you rewind our episode here and play it backwards, you get a whole nother podcast. It's a whole nother show if you do it backwards. It would be cool if you could do something in post editing real quick, like yish, 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 yish. <laughs> just reverse it. Put your thing down, flip it, and reverse it. Oh, that's oh, look, oh, look at there. Yeah, um, that would have been fantastic if we would have began the show like that. Yeah, that would have been good. <sighs> Hindsight. Yeah. Um, yeah, of course, a big one, and I've got a funny. So, Kiss was, of course, one of the big culprits of, of, of being Nights accused in of Satan's service. Right. Nights and Satan. I mean, I heard this every day in my life when I was a kid. Do you know what kiss stands for? Nights in Satan's service. And I was like, I mean, I'm a kid. I'm a stupid fucking kid. So I'm like, really? Is that what it meant? Like, so at the time when all that shit was going on at my granny's house. So my grand, my grandparents' house, they lived out in the country, out in Peaks Mill, actually. They're not far from the school that we went to. And um, my, my, I mean, it was out in the country. I mean, it was way deep out in the country. So it was already kind of creepy out there. But my uncle Mike, their, their son at the time, lived in their basement. Now, their house was, was built, it, it's, it was just made of like stone. I mean, it was just a very Flintstones looking ass house. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, <laughs> best way I could put it, very cold, very dank and damp almost kind of, you know what I'm saying? It just, it just had this very cold feel to it. And uh, my uncle Mike lived in the basement. That's where his, that's where his bedroom was. So when I would go over there as a kid, he was big in the kiss and um i would i would sometimes venture down into his room and venturing down into his room that you had to like walk down these stone steps and into the darkness and you could just feel everything getting colder and you could see the flickering lights he had these fucking skull candles that he would light down i'm talking like i was like terrified but i would want to go down there anyway right and i'm like He's listening to Kiss, the Knights in Satan's service, uh, and, and 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 I know I shouldn't be going down here, but I'm gonna go. And I went down, and I would always be scared to go down there, and I wouldn't stay long at all. And um, uh, yeah, so his 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 bedroom was like the dungeon that played Kiss and had skull candles lit. And um, Wasp was Wasp. Well, I mean, I'm sure they probably were. I think probably everybody was. Everybody. <clears throat> My favorite. ACD. Oh, yeah. And that Christ 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 Christ. I remember that. Yeah. Oh. That's so funny. Hey, listen, talk amongst your selves about Satan turtles. I got to piss real quick. Oh, so let's see what else we got on the list here. ACDC. Suicide Solution from Ozzy Osbourne. Madonna. Obviously, Madonna. We'll have to talk about that when Jason gets back. Black Sabbath. Iron Maiden. Slayer. Anything really heavy metal at this time period was was highly uh, scrutinized and ridiculed over. ACDC, as Matt mentioned a moment ago, um, Judas Priest. The band was sued in 1990 by the parents of two teenagers who committed suicide after listening to the band's music. The lawsuit itself claimed that the band's music had subliminal messages that caused the teenagers to do this. Again, one of those instances where, hey, you play this backwards, blah, blah, blah. Um, let's see. Ozzy Osbourne was, was the highest profile of this. Madonna accused of promoting said themes in her music videos, particularly in the uh, Like a Prayer video. Um, 
which is hilarious because there's a wrestler named Grotto who who comes out to the Like a Prayer song by Madonna uh, in fantastic fashion. And I'm sure professional wrestling has probably had plenty of involvement with their characters, such as The Undertaker, you know, accused, because that was also in the later half of this time frame. Um, so it's just really interesting uh, how much of a lot of our childhood is really just shrouded in in falsehoods. You had movies like, I'm sure, you know, Indiana Jones at one point was probably ridiculed over Raiders of the Lost Ark because it opened up the Ark of the Covenant and therefore it was showing, you know, oh, well, there's supposed to be a bunch of spirits in here. You know, spirits are evil. You don't want anything to do with ghosts. Scott says when he was a little kid, he was told it stood for we are Satan's people. Okay, wasp. Interesting. People. Man, you can... You know, I always thought Kiss was just keep it simple, stupid. Or keep it... Yeah, something like that. Or it, it was stupid, just simple. Kiss. Yeah. Or it simply just meant Kiss. Yeah. Or it just meant, hey, I can fit all four of those letters on a shirt and make a lot of money because exactly. we all know Gene now. And look how much money he made. That guy was a marketing machine. Mm -hmm. It was easy for people to remember. Yep. So, And real quick, I want to go back to... Um, this was like where we grew up, Frankfurt Lore. Okay. Do let's you hear. remember? Oh, I, got, I got a good Frankfurt Lore story for you. Do you. Okay. This is great. Do you remember the church on Hanley Lane? The mysterious church that everybody for years and years and years just swore. They knew for a fact that it was a satanic church. I don't know where a church is at on Hanley Lane. You're talking going down towards the uh, Old Crow Distillery? Yeah, it's kind of, yeah, yeah. It, Hanley Lane. I don't and, know and that I was ever on Hanley the, Lane until I was in a teenager. Yeah. The the church is off the beaten, way down the beaten path, off of Hanley Lane somewhere, I believe. And, oh, just for years and years, we, we uh, the, the rumors just, oh, there's a, it's a satanic church. It's a satanic church. Oh, yeah, we, I, it, blah, blah, blah. So, I was tempt I I was not. It all makes sense, you and your evil turtles. I was not. I have prevailed with goodness and light. I swear. <laughs> no. Um um so one night, a bunch of us, a bunch of us, I mean, you know, Charlie. You remember Milky? Yeah, Frankfurt NWO, baby. Yeah, Too do you sweet. remember <clears> Tom? <throat> I remember. Do you remember Tommy Payton? Yeah, Tommy. Rod, God rest his soul. Uh, did he pass away? He did. Yeah, I didn't know that, man. Yeah, man, he passed away. It was like a year or two ago. Oh, I hate to hear that. That's that's a bummer. Um, probably Tyler Jump. I think was with us a bunch of, we had a car load. It was like a clown car. We were all in Charlie's car, but there were like 50 of us in there. I don't know how we did it. We all decided one night that we were going to go down to the satanic church. We were going to see what it was all about. And we go down there and we go down that road. I mean, it's so dark. It's so late at night and way off in the distance. You can see the lights of the church. So we get out of the car. We, well, I mean, we, we get our car pretty, a good ways down there, but we still get out and we walk a really good ways too. I mean, this is a very long driveway. And we're walking and it's really quiet and we're already just creeped out. We're creeping ourselves out, right? <laughs> and all of a sudden, <clears throat> you hear motorcycle engines rev up and dogs start barking and they start coming towards us. Man, I mean, we absolutely lost our shit and we hightailed it back to Charlie's car. Well, everybody gets back to the car and I'm, I'm tailing behind a little bit. They start pulling off. 
and I'm still running, right? And I remember Tommy Payton reaching out and grabbing me and pulling me in through the window. So, Tommy, thank you, sir. Um, but, yeah. Um, and then I believe one of those guys ended up going down there in daylight one time and talking to the guy who owned the church. And it turned out not to be satanic at all. I'm not really sure what they were, but it wasn't anything satanic. Um, Old church in Winchester that was a Satan church because it had red windows. Oh. What's Winchester? That makes sense. No, I'm kidding. I don't have anything against Winchester. I just, I'm joking. I've only been there like twice, so I can't even say anything about it. Um, yeah, so, man. Yeah, Big Frankfurt Satanic Church. We were all, we talked about it for, for years and years. So, two stories real quick. So, when we were little, my cousin, and I told her this, we grew up out on Ointa Road. So, there was a good chunk of us in a, in a little neighborhood you know, kids getting together, had cousins and stuff in. So, you know, there was a one point where there was a little centralized hub there. It was a good place for kids to run around. So there was a dozen or two dozen of us running around. And somebody thought it'd be the good idea. Hey, let's go get into the holidays old shed that's all blacked out. And we'll have these seats in here. And we'll have an altar put up and and we'll sacrifice Dwight. My cousin, okay. <laughs> she's she's a little older than me, but I told her this the other day, and she forgot all about it. But, but they're in the middle of the sacrifice. It was, you know, two people and her up as the altar. and everything. This is the way I remember it. So I was very, very little at this point. So I don't know how much of this is, like, over overreactive, but there was a form of sacrifice going on with, with a ritual, so oh, to speak. Nice. Well. But uh, you had her as the priestess, and then you had the two followers aside. Everyone else is out in the audience, and I'm laying across the table. And I don't think it was an actual knife, but holding something over like they're going to sacrifice. And about that time is when a couple of the parents slung the doors open on the on the <laughs> said little building. You were and, saved. Uh, and broke it up. So, you know, we never completed anything or let anything out into Frankfort, Kentucky. However... I am unrelated to this story, but back in the 60s, you know where Fort Hill is? Mm -hmm. There was a demon that is called the Mangler. It is a half deer, half human. It is a very close demon to El Diablo himself. This was released up on Fort Hill, and it was so scary that the seven people that released this demon upon the the Fort Hill area in Frankfurt ran off and were never assembled again to put the demon back. So the Mangler remains on Fort Hill. The Mangler. And this is in Frankfurt. It is in Frankfurt on Fort Hill. I may have dated her. <laughs> <coughs> oh. It sounds familiar. Oh. Huh. Could have, could have been. Also, could have been an ex. Speaking of Magic the Gathering, and, and Chris, who's in the in the chat with us tonight, can actually vouch for this one. So, playing Magic the Gathering, and of course, obviously, me and Chris Shear and John Atha used to hang out quite a bit together. And us three were at my house, and we were we were young kids. It was my parents' house, not my house, my parents' house. And we were young kids, and we were working out trades. You know how you do cards so we're we're working out all sorts of trades and everything and he had these unlimited black vice very special card i had a land destruction deck that was centered around the black vice anyways i like the unlimited version because it was a prettier card i traded my soul to chris shara for a for four black vices unlimited black vices at that and I kid you not, and Chris will back me up on this, when I played after that, my first hand, 99.9% .9 of the time was one land, one soul ring, which would give you two mana and two black vice, possibly three, but no less than two, each black vice causing one mana. On my first turn with these cursed black vice, 
land tap, sell ring tap, two black bites. You're sitting there with a handful of cards, and your first turn, you take like seven to 14 damage. Jeez. And it was fairly much like clockwork. John Atha and Chris Payton can both testify that. So can Melvin. I quickly did. I did trade for my soul back because I got really freaking paranoid about a month <laughs> in. I'm like, okay, yeah, this shit ain't natural. I need that yeah. back somehow. And how did your did your luck turn? No, oh, no, the cards still work like that, and I got my soul back. So it all worked out no. for the best. Good, good for you. Yeah. One of my best friends at the Winchester Academy basically dressed like Blade and listened to rock music, so he was obviously a Satanist. And my teachers thought he was corrupting me. Well, obviously, you know, anyone who, who dresses like Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Probably probably a menace in South Central while drinking their juice in the hood, Matt. Yeah. Just do your taxes. Yeah. You Just should do be your there. taxes. Man. Um yeah, I had a my my brother. I remember he when, when my two brothers were kids, they would they would go to church up the road from where we lived, and uh, I was really big into White Zombie, and I had their album La Sexorcisto Devil Music Volume One. Right. It's so my brother, title. yeah, hell of a title. My brother decides that he's going to take. Can I borrow the White Zombie tape to tape on it? Take on a field trip. I'm like. He, he's going with the church somewhere, right? And I'm like, God, yeah, I guess. And he, ta- he takes his Walkman and takes White Zombie, Lost Exorcisto, Devil Music, Volume One. Um, it's, it's, it's one of the one of the the church women uh, catch wind of this and confiscates my White Zombie tape from him, and I never got. I don't think I ever got it back. She probably listened to it. She was like, damn, this shit's kind of tight. Like, yeah, no, I like this. You know, um, I was on a church field trip to Walmart because that's what our church field trip was. And I was told that it was inappropriate for me to buy the cassette of The Simpsons Sing the Blues because The Simpsons promoted an unwholesome and very satanic view. God, you got The longest look. running satan- satanic program on TV is The Simpsons. Mm-hmm. Yep. I blame Mr. Burns. Yeah. Me too. Well, I mean, what else? Uh, oh. Both were awesome albums. I know you're referring to the White the white Zombie and not the Simpson hey, album. But. That White Zombie album is seriously one of the best albums I've ever heard. Like, it is just... And I don't listen to a lot of heavy music. I, like, I really don't. But that album, it's like... If there was a metal album that you could groove and dance to, it would be that album. And all it is is pop culture. White Zombie, all they did was like sample sci-fi movies and TV shows and like just reference pop culture out the ass. Like that's all they did with their lyrics. All of their songs are about like, I don't know, like, 70s grindhouse movies and like plan nine from outer space and all like, that's all they sing about they're not satanic at all yeah but uh what well hold on i'm missing the message here i gotta minimize this my worst uh, worst mistake i ever made was accidentally leaving my copy of devil's rejects on the table where dad could find it yeah probably not gonna that that is a bad sign to say hey i couldn't even make it with the satanist dad yeah i'm <laughs> i couldn't even make it with them i'm now the reject I remember, I, I remember um, when Rage Against the Machine's first album came out, I had the tape, and of course, Killing of the Name was on it, and you know, the whole end of that is just repeated, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, and my mom was like, what is he, li- what is he listening to in there, what is this, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, and she told my dad, and was like, listen, he's got something in there that's saying, you know, fuck you, I won't do what you tell me, with." So he comes in, he comes into my room one night and he's like, Hey, um, what's that? The tape you've been, you care if I take a look at it? And I'm like, Oh yeah, that's cool. And, so, and I like showed him the tape and he was like, Oh, and like snaps it over his knee. And I was like, what? Oh. But then he felt really bad about it that next week and gave me the money um, to replace it. So. 
Oh, that's one. Very of, nice. You know, that's the hardest thing in the world. I've noticed that more. You know, raising raising children. You know, raising a boy. There was a lot of stuff that you know would come on the radio or stuff that I would be okay with. And then you raise a girl, and there's a lot of stuff out there. There's nothing. There's nothing you can listen to that doesn't have some sort of some sort of awful message if you if you listen to it and listen to what they actually say. A lot of stuff is very right. very horrible stuff. Right. But you can't smash the tape over the knee because that will only encourage the individual to to flock to said music or said TV right. show. Right. Didn't make me change my ways. I just went out and rebought it. So, yeah. Jason, do you got anything? I am. I am out. My little, oh, my buddy. little poison glass is empty. Oh no. Do you have You're anything still alive. else for the people? I got nothing else. I think we've covered it. I think. Uh, oh well, and also just one quick minor thing. One of the uh, other big contributors to Satanic Panic in the eighties was obviously. Uh, Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker killer, um, he was very rooted in Satanism um, with his whole mo, and uh, <clears throat> that that spread a lot of that helped that helped further the uh, the fear of Satanic Panic. I had that in my notes. I just uh, totally forgot to to go over that. But yeah, just a what a wild time, man. You know what you got away with tonight? What? No dad joke. I well, just realized, and I'm trying to think of some way to close it out with a dad joke, and I don't. I have nothing. I have nothing at all. That just means that you're going to have to come with the heat next week. And that we will do. Thanks for I mean, tuning in for it. our blast from the past journey. Until next time, keep it retro, and always stay rad.